welcome to the McNeese Public Sector Law Podcast Series. In this video podcast, Attorney Adam Santucci discusses public sector union contract negotiations. Mr. Santucci is chair of the Public Sector Practice Group at McNeese and practices in the firm's labor and employment, food and beverage, and esports practice groups. Union contract negotiations in the public sector are like a tightrope walk. Elected and appointed officials have to carefully balance the rights of employees on one hand and the interests of the taxpayers on the other. As stewards of taxpayer funds, municipal officials have to take steps to ensure those funds are spent wisely. At the same time, under Pennsylvania's Act 195 and Act 111, public employers are obligated to bargain with unions in good faith. Each negotiation is different and will present its own challenges. But with appropriate planning and execution, government officials can pull off the difficult balancing act and produce a collective bargaining agreement that is workable for both the government entity and the employees. While an understanding of the details will be critical, it's also important to keep your eye on the big picture. Collective bargaining, which is another term for contract negotiations, can really be broken down into three steps, preparation, negotiation, and finalization. Preparation includes thoughtful consideration of who will represent you during the negotiation process. Many government entities engage special labor counsel or their solicitor to help prepare for and conduct union negotiations. Some entities engage counsel for the preparation stage, but then conduct the actual bargaining themselves. In any case, you should ensure that your lead negotiator has a very good handle on the things that are subject to bargaining, such as wages, benefits, paid time off, and pension benefits, and the things that are not subject to bargaining, such as your management rights to establish standards of service and the overall size of the workforce. Individuals responsible for negotiating must also have a handle on the status of the budget. Probably the most important question to ask before negotiations begin is, how will this contract impact the budget? If your municipality is struggling financially, then any slight increase in pay or benefits costs will impact your budget. You might need to raise taxes to cover these costs. But how would your elected officials view a tax increase for this purpose or any purpose? In addition, consideration must be given to any potential changes to your health insurance or other benefits programs being forced by the provider. Have you been advised of any required changes to your health insurance program? Will there be changes to copays, deductibles, or the prescription plan? Were there any findings in your most recent pension audit that will need to be addressed? You will also want to consult your management team to determine what, if any, operational changes might be necessary. Are there any contract provisions that are proving difficult to implement? Are there any contract provisions that are driving up your overtime costs? These are all questions you're going to want to have answered by your management team. During the negotiation stage, you should consider setting some ground rules with the union to help avoid misunderstandings. Under the law, both sides will be required to bargain in good faith. Good faith bargaining requires that you be flexible and attempt to reach an overall agreement on the terms of a new contract. However, neither side is required to agree to any specific proposal. Both parties are free to present proposals and modify those proposals throughout the process. The actual number of bargaining sessions will depend on the number of issues proposed by each party and how far apart the parties are at the beginning of the process. Hopefully, you will be able to bargain in good faith and reach terms for a new agreement. If not, you may be faced with an impasse. Impasse may lead to a strike. In addition, impasse for police and firefighter units in Pennsylvania will result in interest arbitration pursuant to Pennsylvania's Act 111. The ins and outs of interest arbitration are beyond the scope of this discussion, but suffice to say it's a complicated and risky process. You should definitely consult with your solicitor or labor counsel in the event that you've received a demand for interest arbitration. There are tight legal timelines associated with the arbitration process, and employers can easily waive issues if they're not careful. If the negotiation teams for each side do reach terms for a new agreement, then that will need to be ratified. That means that the Borough Council, the Township Board of Supervisors, or the Board of Commissioners will need to formally vote to approve the agreement. In addition, the union's membership will need to vote to approve the terms of the agreement in a formal ratification vote. Once ratified, the final stage of the process will be documenting the agreement in a written contract to be signed by the parties. This stage is just as critical as the others. Errors in drafting can lead to significant and costly unintended consequences. Errors in drafting and even genuine misunderstandings can lead to grievances. Grievances can result in arbitration awards that are not really consistent with what the parties agreed to during bargaining. 
locking down that contract language is critical to ensuring that you really get what you bargained for. You should strongly consider having your outside labor counsel or your solicitor review the proposed contract language before you decide on the dotted line. Union contract negotiations are not easy and certainly require a balancing of a number of competing factors. There are many other considerations that we did not cover, but keep in mind that preparation is key. Also remember that the hard work is not done until the contract language is finalized. Please contact us using the information on the screen if you have any questions about public sector bargaining in Pennsylvania, your obligations under the law, or best practices that will help protect your organization.